Good morning, my friends, and welcome. Here we are on the third Sunday after Pentecost, and we welcome in a very special way today the Reverend Carmiero, who she and her wife Kelly were here maybe four years ago as a seminarian, and today we celebrate her ordination as a pastor. And so with us joined together on this special day, I invite you to stand as you are able for our opening hymn. It is number 592. Lord, you give the Great Commission, number 592.
worship continues on page one of our bulletins. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hold the church in your steadfast faith and love that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever now welcoming all those who are joining us in our church and online. Together we pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, guide our hearts and minds as we welcome today all those who worship with us at St. Michael's. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses your threshold feels welcome in the spirit of their love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, Lord God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to please be seated for today's scripture lessons. We hear from the prophet Moses speaking to the people at the foot of Mount Sinai. They have fled Egypt, and now they are gathered together and can be addressed as a nation, a holy nation. Thank you. 
Our psalm today is Psalm 100, and we say it all together in your yellow insert on page 2. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep in his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. We will follow the letter of Paul to the church in Rome throughout the summer, reading continuously from chapter 4 through chapter 14. And this letter was probably written while Paul was in Corinth and taken to Rome by Deacon Phoebe. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Though through him, though, though him, we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that had been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous reason. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. When he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. 
James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Thaddeus, Simon the, the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lovers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Well, it's been a while. I'm so happy to be here with you all after all this time has passed and so much has happened. I was thrilled to share my ordination with some of you and when Pastor Paul invited me to celebrate with her, well, who could say no? It feels good to be here, like coming home, because after all, you are my family. I am very excited to share the message from today's gospel as well. Were you listening? Did you hear what Jesus instructed the apostles to do? Quite the assignment, right? Jesus makes it look so easy, traveling all over the place, preaching in the temples and healing every imaginable, and in some cases, unimaginable diseases. No distance was too great, no audience too sketchy, no affliction too severe. And just that easily, Jesus shows up and gets it done. Today we witness the commissioning of the apostles as Jesus sends them out to carry out his ministry. What all seemed so easy suddenly got a lot more difficult. Setting off on a new task or path can be daunting, regardless of one's level of experience. But the apostles weren't heading out to sell vacuum cleaners or magazine subscriptions. They were going out to do what up until now only Christ could do. The, division, the divine mission that Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, Simon, Judas Iscariot, and the other James and Judas were commissioned with was not just for the 12 called by name, 2,000 plus years ago. This commissioning is just as applicable to our world today with its political rivalries, social divisions, and systemic disorders. Despite the challenge, despite the questionable likelihood of success, despite our inevitable difficulty in accomplishing what Jesus could do far more easily than we can. Christ confidently sends us out. Today's gospel text forces us to acknowledge the gap between the ideal and the real, and ultimately to take a giant leap of faith into our own discipleship. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to have doubts. This is all part of our humanness. It's natural for us, as I'm sure it, is, it was for the apostles, to wonder if anyone, apart from Jesus, is up to the task being assigned. Cure the sick? Cleanse the leper? Maybe. But cast out demons? Raise the dead? Wow. That's kind of above our pay grade, or at least that's what we believe of ourselves. Fortunately, Jesus has, ways, has, he has way more confidence in us than we have in ourselves. Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves. Jesus did not set the apostles up to fail, nor will he ever give us more than we can handle. We see the evidence of this in our reading. 
while Jesus went from city and village and village preaching and teaching and healing, the apostles were to remain among their own people. The apostles could have gone off with confidence, determination, and nerves of steel because they witnessed firsthand what is possible with Christ. We modern-day Christians tend to feel more like sheep without a shepherd. We often lack the confidence to talk about our faith, even with the person sitting next to us every Sunday, let alone the stranger down the street or somebody in the checkout line. The apostles may have been willing to shake off the dust from their feet and broadcast the good news elsewhere, but in our multicultural world, we are hesitant to approach others for fear of appearing too pushy with our faith. I repeat, Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves. Throughout his life, Jesus has provided us with tools to help us learn how to do as he did, live as he lived, and most importantly, most importantly, love as he loved. There are four two-word phrases that provide a good starting point. Jesus went, Jesus saw, Jesus had, Jesus said. Jesus went to the people. He made it his business to minister to people's spiritual needs by going to them. Jesus took the first steps and went to the people so that ministry could happen. He intentionally entered their lives. He worshiped with them in their temple. He went to weddings with them. He worked with them, laughed and cried with them. Jesus, Jesus also intentionally stepped outside his comfort zone, something we are afraid to do. Preaching in a temple where people did not necessarily believe as he did, caring for the outcasts, sick and diseased, and casting out demons. These could have been very uncomfortable situations. Jesus saw. Jesus actually saw people as individuals. He just didn't see a bunch of people, a crowd. Jesus looked into every single soul. I sometimes wonder what Jesus was thinking in those moments. Oh, there's Tommy. I love that little boy so much. I wonder how his game was yesterday. And over there, there's little Chrissy. I wish her peace in her pain. It gives me great comfort to know that Jesus doesn't see me as just another human, but rather he knows me, he understands me, he feels for me, and he sees more than what is observable. Jesus saw that people were like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep are helpless, vulnerable, powerless, lost, hopeless and totally unprotected without the shepherd. They don't know where they're going, and they don't know what to do. They would literally walk off a cliff if it weren't for the shepherd. They live from day to day, moment to moment, actually, with no real purpose in their wandering. Jesus had. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. He was filled with compassion. Notice that the scripture does not say when Jesus saw the crowds, he felt committed towards them. Christ wasn't just committed to the people. He had something far more compelling. He had compassion. I can, I can be committed to my wife for life, but if I don't love and have compassion towards her, all we have is a contract. Pastor Paula can be committed to you as a pastor, but if she doesn't care for you and pray for you because she really loves you, all you have is a cold administrative relationship with her. We know this isn't the case. As church as church, we must not just commit to the people of this community. 
we must be moved to compassion. We should pray often for the people we meet, people along the road, families in the grocery stores, as well as our own families, friends, and neighbors. We should enter into their world, whether it be literally or figuratively, and think about their needs, their pain, their struggles, and pray that they may find peace, be safe, be happy, and know that they are loved. Jesus had compassion for them that flowed like a mighty river because he entered their world. Jesus said, Jesus gives a wonderful lesson to his chosen 12 on discipleship. I believe that Jesus is God and he knows all things, but Jesus is also man. As he developed physically in wisdom and knowledge, he also grew spiritually. That wisdom, knowledge, and spirituality led Jesus to fully experience a life of ministry. Jesus walked among the people, preaching, teaching, healing, raising, loving, and then, and only then, he commissioned the apostles to go out and do the same. Jesus had to experience ministry firsthand and be affected by that experience before he felt he could pass it on to the apostles. We are to care because Jesus cared. Jesus enabled us to do what we could not or we could not or would not do on our own. Why Jesus includes us in his mission and how exactly we are to succeed through him is still a mystery. But the faithful have been known to achieve miraculous things. Perhaps it's because Jesus continues to have compassion for the sheepless sheep. Perhaps it's because prayers have been heard and answers answered. Perhaps the words of the Spirit have been spoken through the right people at the right time. Or perhaps the followers of Jesus have found the faith to see that the gap between real and the ideal can in fact be bridged. Jesus at least seems to think we can get the job done even though it may not be easy. The path Jesus calls us to follow is seldom easy. For nearly three years you walked with me as we learned from each other what it means to follow Jesus. We may have disagreed on a few things, but we certainly rejoice over many more. Since leaving St. Michael four years ago, I have grown deeper in faith and stronger in love of God and neighbor. I have you to thank for that. If I had not stepped into this church, this community, I would not have had enough strength, the commitment to continue the journey towards ordination. Because of you, because of you, I remain faithful to the authority God placed on my life when he called me into ministry. Because of your love, acceptance, and encouragement, I, like the apostles, have been sent out. Because of your prayers, Unity Lutheran Church now calls me pastor. I am humbled and forever grateful. And God's blessed people say, Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, and we proclaim our faith in song. It's on page three of your bulletins.
Bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, and all bishops, for Paula, our rector, and for all priests, and for Rob as he prepares for ordination as a deacon. And may you be grateful for the service of your earth and sacraments. We pray for our president, our governor, and all who govern the whole authority and the nations of the world. And may there be justice and peace on the earth. That our words may not be in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially remembering those on our St. Michael's prayer list. We get your own thanks. We remember all those who suffer at the hands of violence, gun violence, domestic violence, and any abuse. who have passed on, and those father figures who had that important role in our lives, who we miss in a special way today. and anniversaries and graduations and opportunities to go on vacation. Thanksgiving for Carmen, Kelly, and, and enthusiasm for the opportunity to work together with Unity Lutheran and make a difference in our community. With great hearts we pray. Let us praise your name forever and ever. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you always. Amen. We share that peace. We share that peace, my friend. Oh, God, it's good. It's good. It's good to be together. I invite you to please be seated for our offertory hymn. And remembering that God gives seed to the sower and grain to the reaper, he gives to us all that is needed to produce a good harvest.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave us to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant, and unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Michael and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, for and forever. Amen. And as our Savior has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
those at home who cannot be with us today. For some reason, they are ill and cannot partake at this table. And so we say this prayer of spiritual communion with them online. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Jesus. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and never let me be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. My friends, these are the gifts of God. And for the people of God, these are holy gifts, and you are holy people.
Let us join together our prayer of thanksgiving after communion. It, it's found on page 8 of your bulletins. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and call of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may claim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. A few announcements. First of all, if you don't have your ticket to the Mud Hens game, get one from Scott as we uh, leave for coffee hour. And those who are interested in doing some carpooling, we've got some time to make some plans before next Sunday. And uh, go hands, right? I'm looking forward to that. Tuesday, there is no choir practice. You guys did a great job. We're giving you the day off. Actually, they're going to be um, on a summer schedule of every other Tuesday and keeping up uh, their voices and with such great music. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Way to go, you guys. Right. Pretty cool. This coming Wednesday, Prayer in the Park, it's my turn to lead. So if you've been thinking about coming down to Bishop Park, it's a pretty cool time. It's beautiful down there. 6.30, uh, come bring, a, bring a, um, a lawn chair. And sometimes you need a jacket. It gets a little, a little chilly. I uh, can announce to you that we have a new member on Vestry who is taking um, Rob's place as he goes off. Adam Dimitrichina has agreed to come on as, uh, as a member. And we had voting for new wardens. Uh, Adam has been elected as your new junior warden because your new senior warden, recently elected, is Brent Grover. And I ask your prayers for this new leadership as we go for Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, there's going to be a Father's Day raffle, which is for any of the fellows who are here. And it will be um, during our Sunday social in a few minutes. Um, I understand we've got some wonderful treats. And it's nice to have company come, because we get all of this good food. You know how St. Michael's rolls. And thank you so much, Carm. 
for Kelly for being here and having this opportunity to pray and to share the day with us. I can't tell you how excited I am. And now that she's just down the street, we plan on it. We've, we're, we're anticipating some joint uh, ministry. And I look forward to working with you again, again. Um, I'm going to invite y'all to stand for harm's blessing. <laughs> Closing hymn is number 112. 112. It's about service. <laughs> I forget the title.